Our Packer legend and former Packer profile today with Peter Jones is on John Brockington. John Brockington was a running back who played for the Ohio State Buckeyes, O.H. And he, uh, he was part of a pretty fantastic group of super sophomores there and uh, was a first-round pick. But so much to talk about this guy with a shortened career. And no better way to start it than with Peter Jones. So take it away, Peter. Uh, and that's the, that's the thing with Brockington. And I think that the, the current generation don't necessarily appreciate the way that Brockington burst onto the, onto the scene and was a dominant player for the Packers for three, four years. Um, and then had this sharp, sudden descent that we'll get, that we'll, that we'll get into, but a dominant power runner, almost one of the first of his kind of runner in the NFL in the, in the, in the early seventies. Hmm. And you know, a guy that would had speed, could hit the hole quickly, but was very much a north-south runner. Hmm. One of the first great power backs, I would, I would say. Hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, third all time on the Packers rushing list, just a super, super player whose career unfortunately wasn't as long as the Packers would have liked it to have been. Seasons, but he breaks out with Donnie Anderson. Uh, playing the halfback, which was more of a blocking role, and the fullback is the carrying role, same as it was at Ohio State. And I'm just curious, when when did the uh, the NFL, and I guess in college football, sort of make that transition from the fullback being the primary ball carrier uh, to the halfback? And, you know, there, there's a bunches of, of uh, NFL teams that no longer even have a fullback. Um, we cer certainly use one in our offense. But when, when did that transition um, take place? Yeah, so you're talking about, and it's, a, and it's a really great point, because if you look at the 70s, you look at Brockington, and then you look at um, Larry Zonka that you mentioned earlier, Franco Harris at, at the Steelers. You know, so you've got the Dolphins and the Steelers, who were the dominant teams of the, you know, mainly dominant teams of the, of the 70s. And it wasn't really until till, till the late 70s when... Um, I guess the first of the big backs who was nominally a halfback, really a tailback, but not a fullback would be Earl Campbell. And we're talking about 78. Mm. So it's that kind of period. And then with the, you know, with the West Coast offense coming in the, in the early 80s, um, Bill Walsh, that, that fullback became more of a blocker and even a pass receiver out of, out of the backfield. So he's talking about late seventies, really, was that kind of switch over, and it really came with a the predominance of big tailbacks, you know, the the, the Texas guys, the, the old Campbells of this world, then Eric Dickerson later in the early in the early eighties, um, the original Kurt Warner. I don't remember if you remember Kurt Warner who played for Seattle running back. Um, <laughs> but there's a group a group of a group of guys, and um, what you got was those big backs like a Dickerson, for example, who was a world-class sprinter. And you, and you never really had that before. And um, so, yeah, long answer to a short question was late 70s, early 80s really was when that happened. 